guys, so today I thought I would do a little bit different of a video. I was going to film my April favorites, but then I realized that I only wore, like, two polishes in April, and they were gel, and I wore them for, like, a really long time because I was on vacation. So I, I don't really have enough polishes to do an April favorites video. Uh, the background behind me is different. It's probably going to stay this way. I really want to take the racks off my walls because the polishes on those racks are getting bleached. I keep my blinds down and my curtains drawn in here, but somehow... Um, when I was taking them off to switch them, I noticed that they were like a lot lighter on the side than they were on the back part of the bottle that faces the wall, um, and I don't want them to get ruined, so I'm just giving up the racks completely. This right here is in a little like cutout where the closet is supposed to be in this room, but there's no closet doors. I might put one, um, just like sit it up on top of the, the storage unit, but I don't really know because the way that the angle is right now, it's cut, and so you won't be able to see it anyway, but this is probably what it's going to look like uh, for a while maybe permanently until I figure something else out, but I do want to get rid of those racks. And my tripod's always crooked, and it's a lot harder to tell if I don't have perfectly straight rows of nail polish behind me. So today's video is a tag. I am inventing a tag, which is apparently not that difficult when you just make it a subject, instead of having to come up with questions. So the tag is, what's on your lemming list? Or my lemming list? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But I am curious what's on people's lemming list. I'm going to share mine, and then I hope that I get a chance to see other people's as well. I think everybody has a lemming list. It's basically just polishes that you really, really want, but you don't have. Maybe polishes that were really popular or are really popular now that are hard to get. I'm sticking with ones that, like, I can't just go and buy. Like, there's a couple that I could just go and buy. I just haven't done it. These are ones that are more, like, really hard to find. Or if you can find them, they are ridiculously expensive, which is why they're still on my lemming list. Most of these, all of these but one, um, are mainstream polishes. When I go to buy an indie and I find out that I can't get it anymore, I kind of just kind of try to wipe it from my memory. Because um, it's so much harder to find indies once they're not available anymore than it is to find mainstream polishes. So I kind of just give up finding indies after I want them. There's one on here that has been like on my mind for years, but for the most part I do give up on those. So the first polish on my lemming list is OPI's Vodka and Caviar, and this is kind of a jelly-ish red. It's an OPI red. It's not like I need another OPI red. I have 110 OPI reds and then reds from other brands, but Holly talks about this one all the time as being like her perfect red, and the last time I looked it up it was like $75 for a bottle, and I'm never going to pay that much, um, so it's going to remain on my lemming list, but that is one that I've always been really, really interested in. Holly talks about that one all the time, and it's made me want it for like a really long time. I'm just going to try to do it by brand, so I'm going to go through OPI's first. So OPI's My Private Jet is another one. That one was originally like a deep Black, I mean, I've heard people call it a black when I've seen pictures. It almost looks like a really, really, really dark brown holographic. Um, or maybe I'm getting the two versions confused. I know there was an original version that was very holographic, and then they changed it. But I wouldn't mind owning the original version. Also looked that up last night on eBay, and it is stupidly, stupidly expensive. That is another one that will probably remain on my lemming list forever, because I probably will not pay that much for a polish that I'm sure I have dupes of. But there's a lot of it, a lot of these that like, um, I would want to do a dupes video on, but I don't like doing that unless I have the original, and I'm not going to pay that much for the original to do a video on dupes. So the last one that I have from OPI, um, I would, I wouldn't mind having like Mad as a Hatter, or even a few from the Shrek collection, but the one that I really want from the Shrek collection is What's With The Catitude, because I love blues. Again, it's one that I would like to do a dupes video on, or I'd like to compare some polishes that I do have to it, but I don't have it. I got into polish like right after the Shrek collection came out, so I wasn't really able to get my hands on that one, but that is one that I would love to own. I'm going to move on to Essie. So the my biggest Essie lemming is Funky Limelight, which is a neon yellow, and it's probably exactly like China Glaze Celtic Sun. It's probably exactly like Orly's Glow Stick. But I, like, I really want it. And what bothers me so much, I think this is why this one is such a big lemming for me, is that I was, like, just getting into polish when that collection came out. It was in a Brights collection. And I saw it at Ulta, and I bought, like, one polish from that display. And I hovered over the yellow, which was Funky Limelight. And I was like, no, I have another neon yellow. So I didn't buy it. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I thought a lot more rationally back then than I do now. But I hovered over it and I didn't buy it and now it's like impossible to get because I didn't realize how few yellows Essie puts out and so I really want it. And I can't find it. I've looked for it on eBay, like there aren't even any listings 
for that one. The other Essie is the original version of Starry Starry Night. So they put out the Retro Revival collection December, January-ish, and that was supposed to have, that, that collection was supposed to be bringing back Starry Starry Night, but it ended up not really bringing back Starry Starry Night. It was just like kind of a cheap knockoff of Starry Starry Night. The glitters were bigger. Um, the base, I think, was a little bit different, and a lot of people had issues with their base, their whole polish being like gummy, like extremely, extremely thick. Mine actually wasn't bad. I think I'm in the minority though because the majority of videos and blog posts and stuff that I read on that, it was really, really bad. So I think I got lucky there. But I wouldn't mind owning the original. Again, it's one that I would really love to do a dupes video on, but I'm not going to do it without having the original. And there, I mean, wasn't there some article that said that it had sold for like upwards of like $600 at one point? The original bottle, it came out like in the 80s, so it's really old, but that's just not a price I'm willing to pay for a nail polish, just so that I can find dupes of it, which I'm sure I even have a couple of them. I even like went to eBay the other day just to see if it was there, and all I found was like 70-something listings for the new version of Starry Starry Night, but not the original, although I think listings for the original were probably pretty few and far between before the reboot anyway. So OPI is generally like once, if they're like a really hard to find or a really popular after it's gone polish like Vodka and Caviar Mad as a Hat or stuff like that, they're generally like really really expensive or really difficult to find. Where I think like China Glaze, I have a couple China Glaze down here, but I think like China Glaze polishes aren't as hard to find or don't get as rare as the OPIs do. So I do have two China Glaze polishes. Mm, I don't know. So the first one is from the Sea Goddess collection, which was the texture polishes that they put out a few years ago. And I actually have this. Uh, it's Wish on a Starfish. It's a really, really, really pretty pink with um, like a gold shimmer to it. I have this polish. My bottle's about halfway gone, and I am like dying for a backup, and I can't find it anywhere. So I think there was like one site that I found it on, but it looked kind of sketchy, and then I was like, oh, I'll risk it because it's not that expensive. And then it kept giving me errors, like I couldn't check out, and so I just gave up on that. But that is one that I would really, really like to have a backup of. I just can't find it, but I don't know if it counts because I already have it, but it's just halfway gone. The other one that I would really like to own from China Glaze is, I believe it was OMG. It was a collection of holographics, and they were all like instant messaging, like shorthand for different things. I think it was just the OMG collection. It was all holographics, but the silver holographic, which is OMG, was the one that was really popular. No, I don't need another silver holographic because I have like a ton of them, but it was like one of the original silver holographics, so it would be really cool to own that, but again, really, really, really stupidly expensive, um, especially because I have so many dupes now. I have three from Zoya. They all came out in the same collection. Zoya was like the last nail polish brand that I really like got into when I started getting into polish. I don't know why I just didn't like they just didn't interest me right away. But they came out with a collection of mod mattes and the polishes were Phoebe, Mitzi, and Lolly. I think Phoebe was a blue, like an electric blue. Mitzi was a bright, bright, almost like yellowy green. And then Lolly was pink. So they were like these really bright matte polishes from Zoya. And I didn't ever get a chance to get my hands on them, and they're pretty much impossible to find now. I would love to have all three of them because, like, I really, really like the Zoya mattes. The newest collection, not so much, but the original Zoya mattes I really liked, and so it would be nice to have, like, all of the mattes that Zoya's ever put out. The collector, like, the hoarding collector in me is coming out, but it would be really, really cool to have those. I have not been able to find them anywhere. I can't even tell you, like, any prices that I've seen because I don't think I've ever actually seen those polishes available anywhere. And the last polish is one that I wanted like when I was first, like, this is first getting into indies. I mean there was like like Linderella's Connect the Dots that I really really wanted when I was first getting into indies because it was like the first indie polish I'd ever seen and it was that black and white matte glitter that everyone was like kind of freaking out about when they first came out. And that's not one that I can I mean I think I can get that now but I don't really care anymore. Um, so I'm not counting that, I, but I spent like my first, my introduction to indie polishes was on a mad hunt for a dupe of that polish. And I did end up with a few different versions of it, quite a few, after a while just to like satiate my hunger for black and white matte glitter. But the one that I came across like as soon as I discovered this indie brand, I got on her site and I saw that this was sold out and I never did pick it up and this is from uh, Lumina Lacquer and that is Lumina Lacquer's Pinball Wizard and it's a matte glitter topper which are like not even that big of a deal anymore and it had such a unique mix of colors. It was like light pastel and neon mixed together, really chunky different shapes and I saw a 
swatcher, I don't remember who it was, and I probably could not find this picture again, and they had applied it, but they had done it with glitter placement, which I think looks amazing with big chunky glitters. They do take quite a bit of manipulation and movement to get them like spread out evenly, but this person had like taken a toothpick and like placed each large glitter and spaced it out perfectly on their nails, and it looked awesome. And I was not able to find that one. And I even emailed the maker of Lumina Lacquer, which I'm not sure that they make polish anymore. I haven't seen anything from them in a really long time. Um, and she even checked for me, like, you know, fingers crossed, I was so excited to check to see if she still had the glitter to make me a bottle, and she didn't. Um, I ended up buying Totem from Lumina Lacquer, which she said was really, really close, but it just wasn't quite the same. So that is the only indie on there. It's the only one I can think of, because like I said, usually when I come across indies and I really want them, and I can't get them, I just, like, erase it from my mind and move on because it's so hard to find indies after they're discontinued. So those are polishes on my lemming list. I actually don't have a written lemming list. There probably are a few that I don't remember or can't think of that I couldn't come up with between like my shower and the time I sat down to film, but that's the main ones. Those are the big ones. So I tag anybody that wants to make it. It's kind of an interesting subject for me, um, so I'm really curious video-wise, comment-wise, what's on people's lemming lists. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will talk to you later. Bye!